All right, the Sky DBG-1. We're going to do an overview of another one of these cheap pistols that everyone seems to love. I bought a Sky, or I had one, a very long time ago, before 2010, before I made videos, back when the company was SKYY. And there was a vodka out by that name, they got sued. And honestly, at that time, before Micro 9s were popular, it was this pistol and Caltech made a little tiny 9mm. They were the only small size 9s you could get. Okay, so let's review this one. This is their newer model. This is a striker fired one. Comes in this nice cardboard box. Okay, now it has a unique trigger lock with little plastic keys and elaborate thing. We'll look at that later. And the gun does come, comes wrapped in here. And the cost of this gun, I think I paid $203 for it. The retail is a lot higher. I seen it in another gun shop for $230 and I got this from the Sportsman's Warehouse for I think $189. And with the sales tax come out to $203. So very economical. You get the gun with one magazine. They do give you a spare magazine. And another thing to note, the magazines do have a pinky rest with them. Where a lot of these guns come with these mags, you have to buy that as a separate option. These come there. It comes with a detailed instruction manual. And then again, a lot of information about the limited warranty. Now, the reason there's all this stuff about the limited warranty is when these guns came out back in the old days, they had, probably as a sales gimmick, a very weird warranty with them. It was a lifetime warranty. Anything was wrong with the gun, you sent it back. And I kind of believe that if it was lost or stolen, the company would replace the gun. Now that's going way back. Okay, now the warranty is limited. I, you know, you can go to the website and see what it uh, replaces. But I guess any defect or anything uh, is replaced by the gun. It was replaced by the company, but it is a limited warranty. And the, uh, the instruction manual is pretty well written, explains things, how to load, how the gun functions, you know, how to disassemble it. Okay. So what do we end up with for our money? Well you get two 10 round magazines. Yep, and then here's the first issue. Is that the one that doesn't like, I thought that was a good one. Put one in there. Yeah, there it goes. Alright, one of these, and how that slide hold open, there's a finger that hits the floor plate and trips that slide hold open. One of these magazines that don't like doing it. But, there you go. So, you get two. 10 round mags with it, which is a nice deal. Okay, and these are made by the company. They come with the little pinky extension, which is cool. So spare mag, pinky extension, plus right there and there. <clears throat> now, as for the pistol itself, okay, very basic. You have the slide release and the takedown pin. That's about it, okay. This one does not have uh, any mounting system on there. Pretty much one piece, you know, polymer frame, three dot sights, and this striker fired model does not, the uh, hammer fired, the older style hammer fired model, does have a version. I think the CPX-1 will have a manual safety mounted on the frame. 
Now, a lot of people complained about the old guns, that they had several problems with them, and one of them was through use to, when you'd fire the gun, the safety would flip itself up. So that's why they kind of eliminated that from there. Uh, another thing I remember on that old gun, which was a CPX-1, uh, they gave you a list in the manual, all this stuff, type of ammo not to use. It was like half of the ammo on the market. It would light strike. It would, uh, I think it would light strike mainly, maybe fail to eject. I can't remember so many years ago, but the gun was kind of problematic. Now, it's fairly compact, okay, and these grooves on the slide are nice. Uh, they're easy to grasp and make you know, racking a slide easy. And you can see in the back, striker fired where the other one would have a cutout where you can actually see the hammer and it was a double action only. This thing is a single action. Once you fire it, that's it. Okay, and I guess, like all striker fired, the slide has to go back and engage. The striker engages on the mechanism. Okay. These guns have somewhat of a eh, reputation, but like I said, it's been around a long time. Uh, now that Micro 9s are all the fad, let's take a look at the Micro 9. I have the Taurus for a size comparison. Okay, and the Taurus, to get that finger rest in there, I had to buy that separately. But it's basically very close to the same size as the Taurus GX4. Okay, almost identical if you look at it. So Taurus GX4 cost more, even with the rebate, man, I think it was $240 for this one. Then I had to buy the little extensions. Those were like $8 a piece. So, there you go there. So, we're in the same class of a Micro 9, like a current day Micro 9. And, uh, these guns have been around for a while. Now, the guy Jennings, that made this, there's something about it. He designed the barrel, okay, and these guns are accurate. Now, to field strip this weapon... You pull it back, get it locked open on the slide, and you take a screwdriver and you go right to this little pin here, and you pull it out. Okay, then, you gotta watch that because the barrel, you would depress the slide release, pull the trigger, and take her apart. Now, as you can see, it's very simple action. You know, not a lot of parts in there. It's pretty simple design. And it's got like a, call it a tub or whatever. But it's a full rail inside the frame. Okay. So, very basic, very simple. Not a lot to go wrong with. You got your recoil spring here. And then you pull out your barrel there and a look at the inside striker fired very similar to most of your striker fired guns very basic simple action to reassemble put that back in there this back in there and now this can be somewhat tricky what you have to do is place this back on the frame and for me it's difficult you gotta just pull the slide back until you lock it back with this and I think you gotta just press down a little bit on this to get this barrel on like there we go get that out there 
Well, I gotta edit that out. But you would just pull it back, pull the frame back, I had a, and push, pull the slide back, and push up the um, slide stop. And then what you have to do is through this hole here, you look through the little hole and line up the barrel in that in there. And then you just take the pin, put it back in there, and make sure you press it in all the way till you hear a click. Then you're ready to roll. Okay, very simple, very nice. And like I said, same size as the Taurus um, GX4. So this company produced a little Micro 9, and like I said, the only other one at the time prior to 2010 that had these, I believe was Caltech had a little 9mm. A friend of mine had one, carried it for years, never had a problem with it, loved that little Caltech. I don't know if they're still made. This one here is a new version, and at this price, um, if this thing does function, all right, we're going to go out and shoot it. If this thing does function, I'd be tempted to get the CPX-3, which would be identical to this, but in 380. Then I'd have a match pair of pistols. But that's our overview on it. And we're going to try to go out here within the next day or two and shoot it. Oh, one thing I forgot. The unique trigger locking system. You got these little security type keys you put in there. Kind of turn it. Open this up. Drop that down. In there. Lock it. And you're Completely, you can't touch the trigger. Okay. Which is pretty amazing how durable it is or how hard you can probably break this thing off the plastic um, if you really wanted to get at this. But it's a little bit different than the usual long cable lock that goes on there. And the only other thing that I would say about this pistol is there's no safety. Uh, there's no manual safety and there is no trigger safety. Now I know that a lot of people rely on that Glock style trigger safety, okay, and remove manual safeties off. Uh, you cannot get this DBG with a manual safety. You can get the uh, CPX1 is still available, a double action only with a safety, and the CPX2 is like this without the safety. So you have an option there. This one you don't have an option. Uh, the only other option is you can get this pistol cut out for uh, a reflex sight. The slides cut out for a sight. Um, the only thing that I wouldn't like about this pistol or one thing that gets me right off the bat is say you had this thing loaded and the striker compressed. Okay, without even any of these little weird Glock safeties, the trigger pull is, you know, it's there. It's, I think this one's about five pounds or almost six pounds. Um, but unless you had this in some type of holster or something, uh, I don't like it that the fact that, you know, no matter how well you are at handling guns, throwing it in your pocket and your keys or something, catching it, or just throwing it like into the uh, console or glove compartment, something bouncing around in a pen or something gets stuck in there while the car is in motion, it can, can discharge. That's the one thing I don't like about not having a manual safety. And like I said, they had issues with their design. And that's why they eventually removed it from the pistols. So, if I was to carry this, 
I would carry it with a loaded mag and not one in a chamber. Now a lot of people, you know, that's unsatisfactory to them. So that's one thing I noticed myself that I thought I'd point out. But that's about it guys. Uh, I'll have another video where we go out and run some rounds to this thing and see what it does. See if I can get, just get it to shoot and uh, if it's actually worth the crap or just another cheap ass gun with a whole list of headaches. Alright, thank you. And, you know, hit the like button, subscribe, and uh, the link to my Patreon account is down below.